I know it's your time to say oh. the word. The word? The intro. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> We said that we're live. Are we doing that oh, or we're not? We're, we're, well, I guess I, I guess we are now live because we already said welcome back. So <laughs> <laughs> this is already starting out as a bit of a mess. Yeah. Actually, it's like, like you would think eight episodes. Is it eight episodes? Nine. Nine episodes nine, in. Nine, nine. You would think we've got the hang of starting an episode, right? Yeah. But no, no, we're still learning. <laughs> I think it's the intro part. Is the intro part. Yeah, for sure. We don't really have an intro. No. We're just trying to find it still, I guess. Yeah, because even as friends, I don't think we ever do like, hi, how are you? And then we don't like, we don't do this kind of chit chat. We kind of straight go into this like, how's this? How's that? How's that? Like, you know, like it's, it's straight to like a specific topic. True, true to true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are live now, right? But we are live now. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm multitasking a little bit. This is gonna go up and down, I think. So the uh, visual effects. Yeah. Are <laughs> so I have the notes elite. in here, and I'm having just checking that everything is running in here too. Because this time it was Mr. Kenneth who prepared the topic. Uh -huh. um, last week I did all of my slightly unnecessary scientific research, um, but and then we kind of decided, you know what, we're gonna be doing like prep every couple of weeks so that it doesn't get too i guess intense or labor intense whatever for mm -hmm. one of the people to like prepare a topic so last last episode was was my bit this episode is yeah. all about kenny yeah. so if it sucks you know why <laughs> well thank you Sash. <laughs> thank you for the intro <laughs> you're welcome no i'm sure it's gonna be good I've, I've been told it's a it's a goodie i like it i like it i think it's gonna be something for people and us to uh -huh. think about it's more kind of like self-reflection oh, a little bit yeah. so am i going to be charged for a therapy after this probably okay yeah good. probably am i going to reveal <laughs> stuff about myself am i going to discover stuff about myself i think discover i think Ooh. i think it's more a discovery type of part or also uh, an awareness of where you're standing and then Ooh. you're gonna discover Da, 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 da. I'm not going to say everything oh, else because it's going to be... Keeping us on the edge of our seats here. <laughs> uh, it was hard, though. It was hard to find, like, a topic. Um, but... How did you did, how did you discover it, then? How did you come across it? Because, like... Uh, so, they, I, I said it was hard just because articles right now, you need to pay subscriptions, and I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah, you cannot really see the whole thing. I had really good topics, which I'm not going to say, just because I don't want to let anyone down. Okay. But I had, like, really good topics. I had two. And I was like, oh, cool, okay, I found these topics. Uh, and I started reading, and at the middle, I was like... Ah, oh, fuck. you know, there's a way of getting around it. I saw, I saw an, like, a hack on Instagram where you can kind of go into, like, the code of the website and bypass the subscription... Ah, shit. I'm not... Uh, I feel bad because I'm a software developer and <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> I was like, I only knew this from Instagram and there's like a very easy way of going like around it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it looked easy on the Instagram reel. I don't know how easy it is in person because I am also like very non-technical. Mm -hmm. So like I can only do very specific things on a browser, which is like open a new tab, close a new tab, look for something in Google. Um but yeah, I'll try and find it and I'll send it to you. So that, yeah. And this is not because we're trying to be cheap or we're trying to do something illegally. We're just doing this for the quality of the content of the podcast. Exactly. So the intent is actually really good. Yeah. And if you want us to be more like legal, I guess. Yes. Buy us a coffee. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to use it for a coffee anymore. We will use it for a New York Times subscription. Yeah, which they're expensive. How much? I don't remember. I remember seeing it and I think it was it's expensive. Like two pounds it's going to be a like. Month. <laughs> I think no they were yearly. Way. I think they were yearly. That's what oh, I was no, a bit more of a shocker. Ones. You yeah, know, kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's no way I'm going to read articles for a year. That's a that's a New Year's resolution thing. It's like, I'm going to read more worldwide articles. And then like February rolls around and you're like, 
F that, the world is going to ish anyway, so who cares? Yeah. I mean, that's why you have reels. They summarize a whole article in t two seconds. That's true. Go. And but then <laughs> <laughs> you know the <laughs> you know the actual like reliability of Instagram reels is close to zero. Yeah. <laughs> like they're so bad. I've seen so much misinformation on Instagram. It's actually crazy. One's for the others. <laughs> that's so true. That's for our that's for our, uh, like our cheap selves. So Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start with a question. Oh, please so, do. So, get ready, guys. Get ready, Sasha. Oh, this is, this is for everyone For everyone. Reflect. This is, oh, this is so like it's an interactive a, episode. It's an interactive episode. Yeah, oh. it's like, um, you know, Black Mirror episode. Oh, God. Where you select which path you're taking. But this is going to be in your brain. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal show, by the way. Yeah, really, really good. good yeah. Really good. Okay, Sosh. And how would we call the public? The public? non-creatives that sounds non a bit more <laughs> yeah that sounds like we're insulting people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you know what we actually let's open let's open a not a competition let's open the a fight <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> let's open our ears and eyes to anyone who might have an idea of what what our listeners should be called we will obviously have a think think on it as well but if anyone has an idea drop it in our inbox or something or message yeah. inbox you know what i'll make it what, a like real 70 i'm gonna look at the camera Think of a name. Right now. We are looking. And it has to be good. Because yeah. we don't want to be embarrassed to yeah. say that our audience is called this. This is not about you. This is ultimately about us. This is why we're doing this. Because we are really self-conceited. So think exactly. about that. Please and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The question. Yes. If money was not an issue, what would you do? As in, in life? In life, yeah. In it's a little bit charged. It's a bit of a Ooh. charge. Like, uh, because now, you know, I'm, I'm going to make some time while you think. Okay, yeah, <laughs> You please. know, people go to work. People have like this type of like chores to do, mainly in the job corporate section. Um, and sometimes you just got to do it to survive, you know? Like, you need to get food, you need to get a roof. Things are getting more expensive. You get work to work more and then yes. you just try to... You start leaving your passions just to be able to survive. But what would be the case in society, or in this case for us and mm -hmm. the listeners, uh, if we would receive, like, you know, if money was not an issue, what okay. would you do? Yeah. Well, my initial thought was obviously quit my job, go, you know, traveling around the world in a private jet. Okay, 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 okay. I'll stop you there. there. I'll stop you there. What? <laughs> it's not that you have unlimited money. Oh. Okay. But, like, it's... <laughs> she just went... <laughs> it's like, I was like... I was like, I'm not doing anything then. It's like, I'm living a billionaire's life. I think I need to put parameters because okay. I think, like, everyone would be like, yeah, I'll go traveling, jets, jets, whatever, uh, but the, like it's it's not going that far. Okay. Okay. It's more like, what what would you do with your life if money was not an issue? And in here, I'm talking. You would be able to have a house. You would be able to eat. You would be able to I don't know have electricity. Like your basic needs that the 21st century uh -huh. kind of like needs. You have your iPhone or your phone or your Android or whatever. Like right. you have the basics. Oh, you don't. I think now it's been a tendency of having dumb phones also. But <laughs> <Yeah>. next thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you have your basic needs met, basically. Okay. What would you do with your life? Do I have a job? Um, I mean... Do I need to... Like, but do I need to work at all? Uh, no, no. I don't, I don't have you to don't have to. So you don't have to. So the money is not an issue in that sense. But, uh -huh. so my answer would be that I would still want to work, but I would want to work in a, like, in a field that I'm really, really passionate about something. Mm -hmm. So I would, if money was no issue and I had the opportunity, let's say, to join or fund a company that, with my personal interest, it would look into uh, women's health, like, is like, fe feminine healthcare or something, um... Is it called like femtech? I think it's what it's called, like like digital healthcare for women. Mm -hmm. I would go into that 
So I would like, I wouldn't be grinding every day to get the money to have housing, to have food, electricity, and, and an iPhone. Um, but I like, I would work because, but I would work in a field that, that I'm passionate in, but I would work part time. So if money was no issue, I wouldn't work eight hours every single day. Mm-hmm. I would choose my time. I don't know, I would choose two, three days a week. I would travel, but travel to places that I have personal connections with. So I wouldn't okay. travel to like the Maldives because I don't know anyone there. I would go home to Poland because I have that flexibility and money's no issue. Like I want to, like I want to focus on the quality of my life is what I'm trying okay. to say. Like but you can pre- travel, like yes. like you can go to Japan if you want. Yeah, like it's not it's not a limitation. That's great. Yeah, but you know, I think if I if I'm talking like my day to day life, because I think anyone. Even now, like if you work hard enough and you save enough money, you can, you know, a lot of a lot of people can afford like a, an international travel to Japan or the U.S. or Australia. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But if you if you save up and if you grind hard enough, you you'll be able to meet that goal. But I'm just thinking, like, apart from holidays, I would want to like focus on the quality of my life. So doing something that I'm passionate about, spending quality time with the people that I love. Um, and exploring new places uh, when and if time allows. But then also, I was going to say, I was like, oh, I want to be, what is it, like a philanthropist. No. But, but then I feel like my work... <laughs> I don't know what even is that. Oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like when you're um, a philanthropist is someone who like puts an effort into or like funds a lot of the campaigns for the people in need. So... Let's say there's like a like there's like a millionaire who suddenly funds a homeless shelter somewhere, and it's like oh he's a he's a philanthropist because he's invested into that social issue. Okay. Um, but then if I if I can be humble for a second, like my job is kind of related to helping people anyway because I work within healthcare, so it's kind of killing two birds with one stone <laughs> there. <laughs> so. I'm just putting that under one umbrella. But yeah, I think I would, if money was no issue, I would focus on the quality of my life. But I would also focus on the quality of my life right now. Like I would be, I would be the definition of carpe diem. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, I want my life right now to be sick. Okay. Okay. After this really long winded answer, what about you? What would I do? I think I. I'm really bad at this because I, I I come with a question and I don't... You come out of like the blue with an answer, with a really good answer, like a big <laughs> answer. Like, oh shit, okay. I was going to say, I'm going to have M&Ms every day, you know? <laughs> no. Going back to the M&Ms, <laughs> yeah. I'm, assuming, I'm assuming the bag is long gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was think it was long gone in that episode. <laughs> Was it, has there been a follow-up? Has there been another bag since? Uh, no, no, no. Because I I bought that bag thinking that it was two pounds. It's actually know. eight pounds. So, yeah. yeah, no, I'm not falling in that again. Okay, fine. No, I'm fine. Maybe next time, if you're lucky, I'm going to come to the come to the studio with a bag of M&M's. Mm, yeah. I'll give you one or two. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have any more. You've met your yearly quota, by yeah, the way. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Anyways, um, the money was no issue. You know what? Um, I think, like... I don't know. I was thinking about it because, like, I, I'm really enjoying lately. I, I I don't know, guys, if you've seen, like, I also have, like, this kind of, like, photography, videography type of, like, page. Yep. I really enjoyed the last one that I did, which was with this guy, like, documenting more, like, who this person is. And, you know, like, I mean, right. I, I tried to do it in the podcast before yeah. the conversation club, kind of, like, having these yeah, conversations yeah. to get other people. I think I do enjoy that. And having it kind of, like, in film, that would be cool to do, to right. follow, like, people's passions basically oh that's really cool. i think that would be quite cool so like bringing so bringing other people's passions to life is your passion uh, y- yes but i didn't mean that with this but also yes okay so i meant this more kind of like uh, showcasing other people's passion through video and right. through audio basically right. you know like um, yeah like some kind of like mini documentaries of like people oh, yeah. i really like that also, yeah. your documentaries. Just a quick interjection: the um, the 
the kind of um, you know unemployed series. Oh if, yeah. If I can, if I can call. I wouldn't it call that. them the, well documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> Now I make. No, but it's like because <laughs> yeah. they were all like one was like uh, a morning. There was like one with isolation or whatever. Yeah. All three of them because I think there were three of them. Phenomenal. Thank really you. good. Thank really you. good. Everyone, go check them out. Yeah, we have in here the main. The main character. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're the main character, Kenneth. <laughs> Back yourself. <laughs> also, we're going to plug him. Is it, what is it? Frames by Kenneth? Frames by Kenneth. There we go. Mm, yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. go check it out, guys. Yeah. yeah. Go follow Kenny. Putting some effort in there. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy me a coffee. Yeah. No. <laughs> us. Buy, buy us, us a coffee. A yeah. Coffee. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can do like a little like compilation video of <laughs> all the times that we have, we've asked. <laughs> to buy us and car. by the way if anyone is wondering we're, we're still at zero yeah we're still at zero <laughs> but yeah sorry so documenting uh, people's passions uh-huh that i i really enjoy that and yeah like you said maybe i wouldn't say maybe working in these kind of like creative projects i really enjoy that yeah uh, i don't mind not being like my thing Right. I would like to bring my input into these projects. Like, what can I do? Like, for example, with uh, again, with video, with music, whatever. I like to document or to video that. So right now I'm kind of like pushing that to do more like in the present. But I would like to do that. Right. Because like you said, it just feels like people are going to start doing what they like more. Right. So you, I don't know. I like that. You're kind of like following up yeah. and kind of like making people know that. Oh, okay, there is this person and this person is human and this person is like this. They have like struggles and they have like good things, you know, like mm -hmm. make more empathy, self-awareness, not self-awareness, like out awareness of like, yeah, you're not just you, you know. Yeah, Something kind of like bringing the human side of things to a documentary, I guess. Like yeah. Showing the flaws and the reality, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like I really like it. Like Louis Thoreau, for example, I, I really like what he does. Uh -huh. uh, I think it puts like a, Like to whatever he's documenting, he you, he shows like all of the layers within mm -hmm. of that person or that situation, and I I really like that. Uh huh. So your inspiration. Yeah. Okay. L Louis Thoreau. Uh, if you're seeing, please <laughs> contact me. <laughs> Maybe even buy us a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also like. I'm. I, I remember someone saying like. Um, DJs now are just like Spotify, Spotify auxiliar jockeys or whatever. I like that. I like to put music, you know, yeah. like I do enjoy that. So um, I like to be in control of music. So if I can go like to whatever music scene and, and be the one putting music, I really like that. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Would you uh, do it as a, if money was no object, would you do it as a job though? Would you still pursue this, both of these creative outputs? as a job or would you be like no like i'm fine i can do it for free uh, i mean i'm basically because i'm almost doing it for free now uh, <laughs> ah, not, not, not always not always uh, would i still do it yeah i do like these last couple of months i've been really enjoying that and i think like i enjoy it even more because i get to meet also like people around it right and i don't know i just like this kind of like social creative groups i think yeah. i still cannot pinpoint what is it but i just like socializing i think okay. as easy as that <laughs> so i would be a professional socializer <laughs> a creative socializer a creative I socializer like i like that yeah i mean in this day and age you probably can invent a job that does that honestly <laughs> honestly there's so many jobs Um, that I just I usually find absolutely useless. I'm not going to name some of them because um, like a lot of the, I'm just going to say a lot of the ones in the real estate business, they're ridiculous. <coughs> some of the people we've had to deal with, me and my friend who I live with, to get a house, like I get a flat that we're living in right now, we're renting, actually, like they are useless. Like <laughs> the parasites <laughs> on the market. <laughs> horrible <laughs> uh, assistant key manager yeah. Yeah, they just like <laughs> keep, keep. obviously not all of them it's a very valid area of the market real estate some amazing people work in there but some of the people we've dealt with and their job titles ridiculous so but here's like here's the thing again they're probably doing that because they need to 
pay bills. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Unless they really love but doing uh, whatever they do. But. Whatever they do. Not much, <laughs> let me tell you. Not much. <laughs> just like to talk about what they do. Um, but yeah, sorry. Anyways, so back to your question. Back to um, the article, which, by the way, this is, was written by Katie JGLN. Probably I mistyped something. In All there. right. Where's the article from? Uh, Substack. Okay, I don't think I've yeah. heard of that. Yeah, yeah, like they have podcasts and articles in there. It's like oh, cool. quite quite cool. Yeah. Um, Free plug. Yeah, you're welcome. Buy us a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, where is it? Wait. Okay, here it is. So according to a study, or this study, rest and well-being world's largest survey uh-huh. where more than 18,000 people from 134 different countries uh-huh. over two thirds or 68% of the public would like more rest and yep. she also says meanwhile work burnout and stress are on the rise globally uh-huh. so how topical because we lit- I was literally like you know um, complaining to Kenny <coughs> just before we started recording how burnt out I am right now mm-hmm. at my job because I had a day full of back to back meetings mm, yeah and I just felt like like a shell of a human being at 5 p.m. yeah and I mean like it doesn't you, you're always asked like I feel like to work and do more and do more you yeah. know and you're always stressed you about yourself you need to exactly like it, it just becomes that kind of like wheel of being burned out and I mean, uh, now I'm unemployed, but when I was working. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day. <clears throat> back in my day. Uh, that happened really often because you uh-huh. always feel like you need to, if I don't do this well, I'm going to get uh, <clears throat> laid off. Is it laid off? Yeah. In, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to get laid off. Then I won't be able to pay my bills and then I won't be, you know, like it becomes kind of like a snowball of stress if you're not doing one thing and that's when you start like overworking or at least that's what happens sometimes to me and we were saying before like I think I noticed that for me it was a slippery slope so I decided to be more strict of like okay 5 p.m you know like this is my time where I finish and in the rare occasion that uh, I would have to work a bit later the other day I would have like a more chill day you know like really kind of like compensate i guess yeah balance it out a bit yeah because if you kept doing that day after day you don't last a week like you just start to be like super stressed the whole time you leave the stuff that you like to do and then you just you know like it just become one of those things that just people work 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 yeah because i knew like i actually had a thought like a similar thought about it the other day where I was speaking to someone about kind of like job expectations and how usually in different jobs, and it doesn't just apply to mine one, it it applies to all jobs. Like usually you're like, let's say, you know, you're after a raise, right? And they will tell you, oh, like in order to get a raise, we're now going to give you like 20% more work. And if in six months you've done a good job with that 20%, you're going to get a raise. But shouldn't it be the other way around? So we're giving you a raise right now and giving you 20% more work. So now, like, from this point onward, you've you've got more work and more money. Because if you think about it, that initial six months where you get the the 20% more work, you're doing that 20% for free. Yeah, I think it's and, it's and there's always the the next, you know, there's always the next goal and the next goal and the next goal and you're always chasing it, but before you get there, you end up doing that extra work with zero benefit or like zero reward. Yeah. Um which it, is kind of like a rigged system at the moment. Yeah, that's more stress like you're saying, like you're saying like I'm going to give you more stress and we don't know if you're going to get a raise. You know, it's more kind of like if you mess it up with this 20% work more than we're giving you, you might not even get it. And yeah. that gets you in your head even worse. You're kind of like, okay, I have more work. I need to do this work perfect. Like, there's no really that motivation. It's more fear than actual motivation yeah. to get the race. You know, like, you're kind of like, oh, always kind of like thinking about it and doubting yourself. And it just becomes like super stressful. Like you said, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Like, and, very you know, rigged. A work is like your work is a 
part of your everyday life as and your life as a whole, right? But it's like it's not an isolated it's not an isolated element. So like our work fits into the rest of our lives. So yeah, like we said, like if we don't have a job, we're not going to be able to pay our bills, pay our rent, buy groceries, go on holidays or whatever. You know, so it's like it's a lot like a lot the majority of things in our lives are kind of dependent or revolve around our work so especially for people for immigrants like you and I <laughs> it's like and you know immigrants who are in this country by themselves like regardless regardless of whether we have partners or not realistically we're here by ourselves like yeah. we we need to take care of ourselves financially and if suddenly that work drops you know you're kind of like oh shit you know like i you know your parents aren't here for example to support you mine aren't either so it's like you're suddenly in a tricky position right so it's like that's what i mean like your work is such like a crucial part of your life when you're like in this stage and it's like so that's when you put that pressure on yourself you do get up get up get end up be being burnt out yeah no i agree like um yeah, like being outside, you, it's not as easy as receive help when you have like people, like would you say, like a family or something there yeah. to support. You cannot really, because for example, here I've heard sometimes like people saying like, yeah, I struggled like to pay my rent and I'm going back home. And it's just like in, within the country. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah. And for us, it's more like, okay, I'm out of all money. back home as in, in the UK home. In the UK home. Ah. You know, like if I were to move, like, for example, if I cannot pay rent, I would need to like get all my shit and go back to uh, Mexico. You know, like yeah. it's just not as easy to kind of like handle that. And you're kind of like always thinking like, okay, if this doesn't work out, then you start thinking of like, okay, how am I going to get all my th stuff over there? How am I going to do this? Like, it just becomes kind of like, again, yeah. just a domino effect of like thought after thought after thought exactly. after thought. Because again, like you said, because like your work impacts everything like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of actually is a little bit sad to think about it like that, because now that you reflect on it, you're like, oh, wow, like my my job does define my life in a way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, uh, God, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I told you this was gonna be a self awareness <laughs> episode. Okay. All right, <laughs> okay, I'll bring the good news. I'll be okay. well, you know what? I, I'll bring good news in terms of like research. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there was a study in 1970 in Canada, uh, which was run for the universal basic income. I'll explain, I'll explain for a bit, which the experiment was called. Was called mean come okay uh, it had like a explanation on the name but that's not really important <laughs> so among uh, selected households in winnipeg and dauphin uh, they would receive monthly payments to supplement their other income so this resulted in two groups used to stay out of the oh uh, no sorry so like i said before they would give you kind of like uh, your basic income so you're like be able to survive and right. then with that you decide what to do like you can work in another place you can get home you can do nothing like it's up to you to do okay. that <clears throat> and this resulted in two groups that for example which left their job and the reason these two groups left their job for com uh, completely were the new mothers which new okay. mothers just because they had to take care of their babies That's and uh, teenage boys which is the ones that decided to stop working okay. and go back to school. You know, like, oh. because it happens a lot that teenagers, just to be able to help in the household, right. they are, they get to work. Okay. Uh, and this, okay, so after this, I think it was four years, no, actually five years, um, apparently the towns had lowered the rate, the rate of domestic violence, like that reduced. Right. Work-related injuries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, illnesses also were reduced compared to other areas. Okay. So overall, they mm. said like there was a 8.5 decline in hospitali hospitalization in just four years. That's amazing. So yeah, like your life kind of like improves in terms of like uh, if you don't have the stress of yeah. you're going to survive now. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to be talking for a little bit. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, go for it. 
in 2017 uh, in Finland uh, they had kind of the same experiment that lasted two years this resulted in 2,000 participants who received unconditional payout rep and they reported improved health reduced stress and even slightly increased job opportunities they were considerably more confident in their own future and were more likely to take risks and pursue their passions than those in the control group. So like Ooh. we were saying before, it doesn't mean that... So just to add the counter to this, people were worried that if they give you money, you're not going to do anything. Right. You know, uh, you're just going to stop being useful for society. This is how they call it. Yeah. Uh, because we live right now in this kind of like, you need to give back somehow you know work do something but in that variable you're also putting there like okay if you're not giving enough to society we're gonna take your food we're gonna take your house yeah we're gonna take all of that that's basically yeah. how it works yeah that's the assumption right now yeah uh -huh. uh, but apparently like these people they seem just to be more useful in what they really like for yeah you know? like they um yeah like you said i think they, they took more risks so it's like with that safety net of knowing that they will, they still have the income that they need, mm -hmm. they they decided to do the things that they probably wouldn't have the courage to go for. If exactly. It, if it, you know, if if they had to kind of you know grind down and do whatever mundane jobs that that they they were forced to do before, or something more meaningful, you know, like yeah. it's one of those that people sometimes you just get a job because you need a job. Not because yeah. you want the job. Yeah, you challenge yourself mm -hmm. in that way. Exactly. Then you start looking, okay, I have my basic needs covered. What do I want to do? You know, like, uh, and it seems like people, they just, because have you ever had like a really long, like holiday that you kind of like get bored a little bit? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Like, even like, like, I need a purpose. I need to do something. I need exactly. to fill my time. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to get... You know, I'm I'm gonna get like really aggy, but I think it's also, I th I think it's also the result of being conditioned by my current job. I'm not not my current job, just my my job experience to to feel like I always need to do something. That being rest, like having rest or like doing nothing, is not okay. Actually, that's not, not that's true. not even job. It's society. <laughs> that is true. So, like, do you think if we didn't have that pressure of job? we would just stop like having that kind of like thing of oh okay i can just relax and not have a no no i think humans <clears throat> humans as a species we are goal driven like yeah we're we're a goal goal driven species as a whole like you know back in back in the day you know hundreds and thousands well maybe not hundreds and thousands tens of thousands of years ago years ago like jobs as they are right now they didn't exist and people still like pushed through they still evolved they made new things they created new cities villages you know civilizations whatever art um inventions and there was no uh, incentive of a job back then it was just humans being humans like wanting to better themselves like i'm a big believer believer in there's something called like a goal setting theory mm -hmm. and it's like humans do really really well by setting goals for themselves and whatever goal it may be can be financial if you want it to be or it can be creative or whatever other um but yeah i think um what was your initial question <laughs> i can't remember <laughs> I, I, but, oh like it, oh, would, humans, you would, yeah. would humans still like do stuff yeah I I think so. I strongly believe that that people would still take up jobs. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. I guess this is what the research is showing, which I I probably should put like more information about like how people were actually doing stuff rather than just I mean health wise, it helped. And I think oh, I put the I put the thing of like okay reduce stress and increasing job opportunities and increasing confidence. You yeah. know because. You're not worried about that, about that. Like you said, like you just start to kind of like think more of like, okay, where do I want my life to yeah. be right now? Uh, so I guess that would give us more purpose on what we actually are. Because I, I think I always say this. Um, I think like personally, uh, I, I, 
I always grew up like kind of like in a ladder, kind of like, okay, I'm going to take this step. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to, let, let's start with primary school, middle school, high school, university, find a job. You know, like it yeah. always kind of like, you don't really look back. A better job and a better job exactly. and a better job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So uh, in Mexico, even having, having a sabbatical, well, before having a sabbatical year was kind of like, oh, okay, if you do this, you're probably not going to find a job. And they kind of like put you these stressors of like, okay. Uh-huh. If I don't have one year of studying or like working, well, mostly studying, my life is going to go to like crap. Yeah. Not to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can curse if you want to. <laughs> um, I'm just deciding to take a step back from cursing, not just in a podcast, but also in my personal life because I've been cursing a lot. So <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone who heard me curse before. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I felt like I never looked back or, um, well, up until recently. I mean, yeah. this last cop, like uni, I think it gave me that kind of sense of like, oh, okay, people actually took a year to think what they want to do. I didn't feel I ever had that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's kind of like finding that kind of direction again. Yeah. If, we ga- if that was given for people that time to think, because mm-hmm. you're always thinking about survival rather than you know like yeah, what do i want to do steps exactly rather than your past ones now that you say this again that like i am reflecting and i've i've had that reflect reflection in the past where um this is a fun fact i went to school when i like when i was a year younger than everyone else in my mm. like preschool oh, you were that smartest oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> i wish that was true no actually i went to school a bit earlier because i was i was six years old and in poland you go to school when you're seven. You go to primary school when you're seven. I was six, and I had my bestest friend in the whole world. She lived three houses away from me. We were best pals in primary school as well. And then one one afternoon, I find out that come September, she's going to primary school. And then I, I look up at my mom with my eyes big and brown, and I'm like, Mom, <laughs> am I also going to primary school? And she's like, no, Zosha. You're only six. And then I threw such a tantrum. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to say like a a philosophical phrase that shocked my mother. (laughs) No, I threw the biggest hissy fit my preschool has ever seen. And I was like, there's no way she's going without me. Um, And they enrolled me earlier. (laughs) So I went to school a little bit early. So I I had my A-levels or whatever. So I went to university when I was 18 instead of 19, uh, which is, again, a year earlier for Poland. And then I did my three years of undergrad. And in Poland, your master's is two years. So then I moved to the UK to do my master's, and I did my master's in a year, which meant that by the age of 22, I had my master's, and I was, like, two years ahead of... <laughs> everyone else everyone else who I was supposed to be on track with and then straight after my master's I went into working and then so I started like full-time working when I was 22 which I know for a lot of people is is completely fine and you know that's that's a great career path and I'm very proud of it that being said I sometimes I can't can't help but think that I was kind of robbed of those two years of discovery yeah yeah you know like I rushed myself for no reason. And I didn't realize at the time I was rushing myself, but I didn't have it. You know, I didn't have that, oh, let's let's have one more year to think about it. Because all of my decisions came a little bit earlier than they should have. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think I have kind of like, not the se- like the same story. I didn't throw a tantrum. <laughs> 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 but like, uh, for example, in Mexico, like when you're at the, when you're in the second half of the year, Back then, you would go with the other, like with the lower generation. So I was uh-huh. kind of like the oldest right. uh, in the generation that I like grew up with. So even like every time you would even say about having sabbatical or something like a break, they would put you like, okay, but you always have that in mind of like, okay, but I'm already a year older than I should right. be kind of like uh, graduating. I'm not graduating with the people of my age or anything. Uh huh. So I think, at the, I think the same. I felt yeah. like I, I kind of like lost... That kind of like piece of like, okay, you know, self-reflection, I guess, or that yeah. year that's, I feel like, yeah, yeah, it became more of a pressure rather oh, yeah. than, um, than 
not relief or whatever. Like you said, there's like a path that's set out in front of you and you are expected to follow it. And anyone who goes against that path or diverts from it is automatically scrutinized. Mm, yeah. Because being different in a lot of cases is not accepted. Mm, yeah. So then, you know, you throw, well, you expose yourself to criticism and sometimes it's tough. So is it easier to just follow the path and, and not ex- shut, yeah. yeah, and not not get the criticism. Yeah, um, but then again, I'm not saying like not having education. Is good. I think education is good. Like uh, I'm I, just saying like hi, giving that point of like really think, you know, like have that time to really like reflect. Maybe not on just once. I feel like maybe just like every I don't know. I'm just throwing like numbers, yeah. but like every two every year or every month or whatever. Like I think that that space needs to be given to kind of like redirect yourself and find more happiness i guess i would think like that would kind of like more kind of like purpose and direction and yeah feeling overall healthier which i think that's what it gave these uh, people that's also really interesting that they mentioned the health benefits and i i wonder if there was more done about it but like you know well everyone um a lot of people know that like stress is so like tightly linked to your physical health like your levels of cortisol which is a stress hormone and like other hormones that i'm not aware of because i'm not a clinician um that impact your physical health but it's like yeah like if you are mentally like if you're stressed and if you're anxious and if you're mentally not feeling great it will result in you being physically um i don't know unable or physically poor And then, you know, how are you, you know, for a lot of jobs, let's say for uh, like blue collar workers where you are working physically, like how are you expected to do your physical job when you're like your body's giving up on you because you're so stressed? Like it's almost like a vicious cycle. So it's like, yeah, yeah, like we need to, we need to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. True. Please do. (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> I, it's like, again I'm really taking everything back to me which I do apologize for <laughs> um, and uh, yeah just to give I mean, maybe a bit more context of what's happening now which I think it was interesting Ooh, yeah because that was from the 1970 so right? so the Canada was 1970s and Finland was 2017 so that okay. was recent well, fairly recent yeah but there's another but, one but very similar findings anyway exactly so if there's any Irish listening to this, <laughs> go back. But I'm not saying in a, in a bad way. <laughs> like, I'm saying it because it says... There's a similar experiment... Ah, no, forget it. I think the applications were before. So there's similar uh-huh. experiments are being done now f- from 2022 to 2025 in Ireland, oh. which aims to support the arts and creative practice uh-huh. by giving a payment of 325 euros a week to artists and creative art workers. Yeah. What are the chances that you have you have any Irish heritage? Honestly, I had a look into like, <laughs> do they accept uh, immigrants? <laughs> it's like the chances are slim to none, but I'll try regardless. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And that's also a very decent amount it's of money. It's a decent amount of money. Yeah. You, I like, compared it with my salary before and it's not that far off. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it as well, it's like, like you said, it kind of covers all the bases. Like, it's not going to cover a new iPhone or a trip to Australia, you know, every month. But it's going to cover rent. It's going to cover uh, bills. It's going to cover food, food. And some, like, small life pleasures, like maybe getting a brunch from time to time. Like, that will... Of course, Probably. you would say brunch. I love me a good brunch. <laughs> Kenneth, I am a white woman in my <laughs> mid-twenties. Of course, I love a brunch. <laughs> Make it bottom. Listen, we've got a deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not bad at all. And, um, and, and, and you it, can have a job on top of that too, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly like create like artists. They're, they have their basic in- income and from there, they yeah. keep doing their art. To get even more, you know, like to whatever they do. That's beautiful. Yeah. And in Germany, they're doing the same thing, but that study is finishing 2024. Uh, yeah, so it's not finishing sure about this going year. to Germany, though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? Well, no, I, I would go to Berlin only. You you would? Yeah. Yeah, Berlin is quite cool. Though. Berlin is I quite was cool. just making a historical joke, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, but Berlin is quite quite cool. To be yeah. fair, I've never been anywhere else in in Germany, so I can't really make an informed decision. They're different. Yeah, I've been to Munich, to Memmingen, which is where a friend lived, like in a town <laughs> in, in Germany. The cultural ep- epicenter of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Frankfurt and what is that? It was nearby, so, so we went like, like I think a one few of the places. Three there. main cities you've, yeah. you've gone to. Yeah, Berlin is completely different to everything oh, okay. else. Okay, yeah. yeah, probably because of like the international population, right? I think Munich also has like an international population, oh, but okay. I think it comes more from the historic side of like being more liberal because of like yeah. the I don't know this probably you know the story better. Oh well, you would I think you knew the story better than me before, like the Berlin Wall. Uh-huh. And like when that was turned down, it just became kind of like, okay, in here we're the opposite. We're more kind of like liber- liberators. I'm just talking like pure shit right uh-huh. now. <laughs> so, but I, <laughs> it, it feels the vibe that it there is just kind of like, okay, right. we're, we're now the, the hippies of Germany. You right, know? cool. And that's Munich. Uh, no, Berlin. Ah, Berlin. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, Munich, yeah. Munich is really, Munich is, I feel it's German. Oh, like, okay, okay. You go and it's like, okay, now this feels like Germany. Right, right, right. Um, so Germany is doing the same thing where they're giving people money. Yeah, the is, same. Is it the same thing for artists or for anyone? They just made like a choice, which yeah. would have been a bit shit to be fair. Like uh, they, uh, they, you, you would sign up and they would do what they would, would say statistical twins. So statistical twins is like, uh, for example, I'm a 26-year-old uh immigrant latino and i live in these conditions and i have this amount of wage and stuff like that and they will have like someone that resembles my gender my age and my environment okay and to one of them they would give the the money and to their one no and they would kind of like compare them wow yeah yeah. Oh, that sucks for the other for person. For the other guy. Whoa. Imagine the guy breaking down and the other guy's like, take note. <laughs> <laughs> so this is happening. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that's tough. Are they yeah. aware that they're being evaluated like that? I don't, think, like so. That? Okay, I don't think so. Cause, cause I, yeah. I don't know how they... Well, no, probably. Because for them to know the information, they probably like need to be filling a form every now and then. You know? Oh, I guess, yeah. Ooh. Just to see. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, but yeah. So hopefully, like, these studies actually bring something better. It seems like they're doing it. Uh, it's kind of like, um, it might, like, also lend itself. Do you know how the UK, and it's, I, I don't think they're taking it to that extreme, but the UK was trialing the four-day four, four day work week. Yeah. So instead of working five days, you're working four. And I don't know if the hours are, are extended. I don't remember. I think it depended I on the company. It, I think it was to oh, 10. Oh, maybe. Yeah. To 10? I think so. I PM. think so. No, 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 like 10 hours. Oh, 10 hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, yes, and I think they they tried that out, again, because of some sort of studies that proved that a four-day week is just as efficient, like, in terms of the yeah, the efficiency of the employees, if not more efficient than a five-day week. And to be fair, I would be all about it like if I was if I was able to kind of be flexible with which days, you know, which days I want to like work longer at and then take one day extra for like a weekend and end up going somewhere and, you know, enjoying my life, go on mm-hmm. a city break, staycation, whatever, go camping. I would never do that. <laughs> but <laughs> Glamping. A glamping, yes, big time. If there's a hot tub, a running shower and a toilet that has a flush, we're good. <laughs> and a bed, a bed. Um, but, and yeah, so like, I can see that countries are trying. I just think it's so slow that it's not, you know, those changes are not going to happen in our lifetime or at yeah. least not in the most productive years of our lifetime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like maybe there's when this, we're 50. there's really this pushback of like, uh, you know, producing and being available and, you know, mm. like it's just, the rat I race think is real. A lot of, exactly. A lot of like companies are actually like scared that their company is not going to work uh-huh. if uh, if they fall into more this four week or whatever, you know. But yeah, I agree. I don't think we're going to see it. Maybe like I'm going to I'm going to make a prediction. Uh. I'm going to say when I'm 43 years old Oof. is when I'm going to see That's not like, too far off. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. closer. <laughs> <laughs> tough, 
<laughs> that is tough. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be... Like, that's my prediction. That it's going to be... Yeah, and I'm going to be back in my days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a four-day four week, working week, or like they're going to be giving money to people. What, four-day working week. I think giving okay. money to people is going to take longer. Okay. I think it's going to take know, longer. You know what factor we're another factor that we're missing which i don't know if we, if we have time to discuss but another factor that we're missing which we've mentioned continuously on this podcast is ai because you know yeah you know what doesn't have emotions and doesn't get stressed out and burnt out an algorithm true <laughs> true and a large language model so i think that's maybe to see it more in a positive side the artificial just again to leave the final comments <laughs> <laughs> Is that they, they're going to take over of, like, the work that needs to be handled, you know, the work that huh. we don't want to do and give us more kind of, like, time to... Oh, that's a very positive spin on it. So, like, the, the boring, annoying work is what you're saying. Exactly. Oh. I mean, but they need to, like, make that step. It's not like, okay, AI, replace them. And people that are unemployed, you don't have any money. Yeah. You know, like... Go fend for yourself. Exactly. So, yeah, maybe. In a positive note. Hi that i yeah. like that from you yeah. yeah good research on it as well cool really Thank enjoyed you. that i don't want to finish with one quote oh hit me yeah which hit is us. gonna go the other way around <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this quote was william s burroughs who's that good question <laughs> <laughs> do you know or did you <laughs> i'll just leave it in there <laughs> <laughs> for homework, Sash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do me a research of who this guy is. <laughs> William S. Burroughs. <laughs> so William S. Burroughs said, what does the money machine eat? It eats youth, spontaneity, life, beauty, and above all, it's, it eats creativity. It eats quality and shits out, shits out quantity. Damn. Yeah. Capitalism. Nicely said, Bill. <laughs> 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 William. Well, yeah, but the short for William is Bill. Bill. Yeah. Is it not Will? I think it's no. I think it's both actually. Would you call? A, oh no, am a I William, being stupid? Would you call William a Bill? Wait, yeah. What's the long of Bill? Uh, okay. William. Yeah, William for short. Wait. Will, Will, Swilly, Willy, Liam, Bill, and Billy. Oh shit. I had no idea. I thought Bill would be Billion. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that is a horrible name. Wait, is Bill short for William? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay, <laughs> perfect. Sorry, I didn't mean to. That was a great quote, Bill. Honestly, I really like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Should we leave it in there? We should yeah. reflect on it, people. Reflect on it, think about it, and yeah. have a good week. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. See ya. Adios. Bye.